So every at the end of the year, we say that we can't believe that we already came to the end of the year. So one year has passed really quickly. And um, today in the passage, you can see that uh, those who do the will of God will live forever. So um, I'm pretty sure that the remnants here, they are not very interested in living forever because, you know, <laughs> it's a kind of tiring life and not many people are interested in living forever because the eternity that we can imagine is, think about it, how can we imagine something that is eternal? So we can't live eternally. And on top of that, the eternal life that we can imagine is having this tiring life forever. So this is not really a, a blessing if we have to live on earth forever. So it may sound like meaningless today, but today we have to remember that this word of God says you will live forever, which means um, you will remain in the work that is forever. So that is what God means. So we are not going to stake our life on the things that will pass by in the end, that will not pass away, but on the work that is eternal, we will stake our life. So today, um, we should look back on the answers that we received for the rest of the year. That was, we're freed from the things that will pass away or that will disappear, but to go to the only of God. This has to be the answer that we have received throughout the year. If you received some answer other than this, then we have to look into it more deeply. No matter what answer you have received through your prayer, the conclusion is always the only Christ. So like we said before, this is the last English service of this year. So closing this year, tomorrow we have the year end service. You have to look back on your time. And looking at all the answers that we have received through the pulpy messages, you will be able to see what answers you will receive next year. So just to spare your time a little bit and have the time of concentration. And if you concentrate a little bit before the year in service and the new year service, then you will find God's word as the covenant when you listen to the message. So last week, the pulpy message said we... Um, have we are the spiritual unbeatable the spiritual final boss that was the message that we heard and then um, the pastor talked about the limited life um, when you look at the summit of one field like Steve Jobs or some idol groups then you can see that they limited their life on one thing until they become the summit of that field so um, they could become the unbeatable king in the field because they limited their life on that part. But who is our true unbeatable king? That is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ overcame everything. So his name is the spiritual unbeatable to us. And when we limit our life on his name, then we will live the life of the spiritual unbeatable. But before that, there is something that where Satan limits us on. So it's the limited me. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think our remnants may understand the limit of the life very much, but I think adults and our multi-ethnic groups may understand there are so many limits that we experience in our life. What is your limit? Uh, when you get older, getting older you feel a little bit hasty so even our remnants are the same when they go to the high school they say like i think i'm kind of too late to study hard i think i lost my chance to improve myself but if you feel already that way then how much more so when we get 30 and 40 and 50. so age is a kind of barrier or the limits that people see and our environment our circumstances like oh, my parents are like this I'm from this kind of family or oh I don't have a good condition so that is the kind of barrier that we feel and uh, third thing is kind of biggest one that is people 
the people problem that we have, like some friendship or the relationship with people around us, and health can be one part of it. If you are sick, then there are not many things that you can do. So we feel limit when we have problems in this part. <coughs> so Satan wants us to stumble over these problems. Just as all the people in the world, so we want to get successful when we are younger, and we want to impress people around us, and we are fixated on the better things all the time. So these are not bad topics. It's good to be younger, and it's good to have the good environment, having good people around us, and having good health. Um, but these are all necessary. But when we are fixated on these topics. We can lose hold of so many important things. That is the problem. Just like today's scripture, Satan makes us love the things of the world, love the world more, where we cannot find God's love. There is no one who was found by the Lord to be used older than Moses. So Moses is the person who were who was used like when he was eighty. And how about Joseph? So Joseph is the kind of ha had the worst environment when we talk about it physically, and David. He had difficulties because of people, even from his family members, and Paul. So Paul could not solve his um, the health problems till the till the day he died. God did not give him the better health. God said, "Your grace is sufficient to you." So, regardless of health problem, Paul was used to the will of God for the will of God until the day he died. So, the health was not a really limit to him. The people were not a limit to David. Even the environment and getting older was not a barrier to them. So, what is the mystery of all of them? What mystery did they have? Covenant was bigger than all of these things to them. They had these problems, but these people, the remnants, completely limited themselves on the covenant. That is why covenant was bigger than their fear. Covenant was bigger than their people around them. Covenant was much bigger than their slavery and being fugitive and everything. If that is the case, then we have to limit. Before Satan limits us, we have to limit ourselves properly. If I have to tell you the conclusion first, do not limit yourself to the things that will pass away. So, those things that will pass away, let them just pass away. Let them just go by because they are not important. That is our beginning. Uh, when the things don't go the way I want, or when we lose the th things that are really important, we think like. Oh, is this the end? Oh, is this everything? Oh, maybe I come to an end. Maybe I should stop here. Maybe I have to give up here. So that is、um, where people are discouraged and have the despair. And sometimes they just finish their life by themselves, like killing themselves. But actually, even the non-believers say that when you go to the bottom of your life, that is the best place to begin again. Even the non-believers say that. But how much more so to us who are the children of God? Spiritually, it is the same. When we are drained completely, when we do not have hope at all in the world, God says that this is the good time for me to pick it up. So this is the good time for God to start in my life. So God already finished everything. God allowed me to lose hold of everything sometimes to begin again. So that is why we should not be afraid of that beginning. When you go to the lowest place, that's where you can hold to the highest name of Jesus Christ. That name is Jesus Christ.
the name that enables us to have the right beginning. So we have to know this name really deeply. Um, Christ is the name who finished us, cut off us from the absolutely impossible background. It is not that I didn't finish it yet, but Christ finished it everything. So with this name, what do we do? We already have this name, and what we do is to have the spiritual fight to save myself and save others. The spiritual fight will absolutely give us the evidence. It always gives us the evidence. Um, last Friday service, uh, the pastor talked about the spiritual fight. And one thing that remained in my heart was spiritual fight is the fight where you invest all your physical things to gain the spiritual things. So that was uh, that was a kind of one sentence that can define the spiritual battle really well. Um, it gives you easier way than we fight against people, and when the spiritual path is opened, then you can find that everything goes really easy, because um, the things of the kingdom of God is fulfilled that we cannot imagine. That is fulfilled. So. Even if you fight just once, it is benefit to you. But if you fight the spiritual fight that will finish really everything, then you will gain the power to move the age. Um, when you think about like Taekwondo or Judo, um, that kind of match, you know, if you have a kind of, I don't know how to call it, but when you have one fight with a partner, then that will be your one experience, right? But it, think about it. If you have 100 matches with a partner, that means you know how to fight well. So spiritual fight is like something that is better. The more you fight it, the better you are at it. So it is, um, even if you fight just once in your life, it is a good thing to you. So you will have the evidence from the spiritual fight. Uh, but this this name of Christ and the spiritual fight and all the things that I have said to you, um, when they become good word and kind of knowledge or a good lesson to us, then that's not enough because the Bible says God's kingdom is not in the word but in the power. So if you really understand the gospel, then the power has to be manifested in our life. So what God gave to us to reveal the power into our life that's the pulpit message. Pulpit is the place where we can really confirm the answers. So let's just look back on the last three years. The year um, the year twenty two, the Lord says I will give you rest. And the year 23, this year, I will be with you. And next year, the year 24, the title says Galatians 2.20. That is, um, I am with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ on the cross. So, um, when I looked back on the year 22, God said, I will give you rest. And that was the year when we changed the concept of the rest. So the rest is not like sleeping like those people here. <laughs> no, that is not the rest. <laughs> so <laughs> the rest is really found in the worship. The answer, power, and the rest are all found in the worship. So the Lord changed the concept of rest throughout this year. So throughout this year, we learned that, oh, the true rest can be found within the word of God, within the worship. So that's how God changed our imprint. And this year, throughout this year, the Lord taught us how to be with God. It was the year when we applied how to enjoy the with 
with God throughout the year very deeply. So when I organized all the pulpit messages for the last 50 weeks and I looked back into my life, God taught me how to enjoy that with, and even the difficulty is not difficulty at all. And we experience the with that is not found in this world. So because of this with, it's okay to have something else, but it's also okay not to have something else. So um, when you experience that, then the, the conclusion that you come to is the only When you are with the Lord, that means you have everything. You have the name of Jesus Christ, you have everything. When you deeply realize the value of it, then you will find that it's okay to have something and also not to have something. It's not that nothing is really necessary except for the name of Jesus Christ. So that is why next year, the theme is the only. Uh, we're going to receive the answer of Galatians 2.20. So with this stream, you are going to listen to the year-end service and the New Year's message. Um, the age that we are living in right now is disaster-stricken and conquered by the darkness. So it's our time to hold to the covenant that can block the disasters and crumble all the darkness. So every age, what God prepared was the covenant to save the age and the remnant who held to it. God only prepared those two things. So within that process, if you see that everything is the process, then you will see that, oh, you have the covenant to overcome the problem of this age. So God is giving me that covenant through my family problem, through my health problem, and also the people problem. So if you have a certain problem right now, see that as the guidepost. God is giving the covenant. And if you have an answer instead of the problem, then you have to see that, oh, the Christ has to be manifested through this answer. So today the title is, Do the Will of God. What is the will of God? What does God want? What God wants is for me to have His body as an enemy. So that will be the beginning of the eternal answers that we will receive. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We've come this far by the grace of you, Lord. Let us see the age and the word of God and hold to the correct covenant which we hold firmly to. We have important time schedule of this new year. Let us hold what God will do in this new year firmly in our heart. Bless our multi-ethnic groups to be the first witnesses of the pulpy message in the new year. We give you all the glory and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.